All right, Meseches Moid Katan and Meseches Chagiga. We're going to combine them because, as we're going to see, there is a lot of interplay between Meseches Moid Katan and Meseches Chagiga. But, but just before we begin the topic, we're going to be delving into which finds itself in both Meseches. First, just to give a little bit of an overview to both Meseches. So, both Meseches, as their names suggest, have to do with Yantiv. Moed Katan. Moed Katan is the mini or the quasi uh, moed, which is a yom tov, um, and uh, and chagiga represents the carbon chagiga, which was brought on yom tov. Um, moed katan in in its whole deals with really three topics. Two of them really is dealt with, and then a third one is dealt partially with. Um, the two major topics of maseches moed katan are first the laws of Chola Moed, the intermediary days um, between the first half of Yantiv and the second half of Yantiv. And the, the second major topic are all of the laws of Avelus, or 95% of the laws of Avelus of mourning are found in Meseches Moed Katan, uh, the second half of the Mesechta. A lot of, uh, isn't there a lot of that stuff, like I just finished Tainus, so they talk a lot about some of those, the, the, where the laws of Tainus overlap. Uh, right, okay. exactly, yeah. So like, for example, the laws of learning Torah um, for, for an novel, right, is discussed in, in, in Tainus, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so there is definitely some overlap because of the connection between the two different types of Avelis. Uh, but by and large, you know, like, like 90, 95% of the laws of Avelis are covered in Mesechus Moit Tatan. The rush has a hundred entries, a hundred entries in Meseches Moed Katan. It, it's it, it, just in the third parak, which are the laws of Avelis. It's, it, is a, a, it is the source for the laws of Avelis. Um, that is Meseches Moed Katan. Also in the context of doing work on Chola Moed, the Gemara uses it as an opportunity to discuss some of the laws of working the field during the Shemitah year, during Shvius. So that, those are the three major topics that are discussed in Meseches Moed Katan. Again, Shviyas is, is discussed, you know, not at great length, but a number of the laws of, of Shviyas of the Shemitah year are discussed. Um, Meseches Chagiga discusses some of the laws of Hilchos Yantiv, some of the laws of um, uh, the Halachos pertaining to Chola Moed, but by and large discusses the laws of um, uh, the halacha, the mitzvah of aliyah, aliyah l'regel, of going to Yerushalayim during the three uh, shalosh regalim, the three major yom tovs, uh, during Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot, and bringing the carbon chagiga along with that. That is what's discussed in Mesechus Chagiga. So to combine the two, Moed Katan and Chagiga is natural, and that's why over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be learning through the laws of Cholomoid. I'd like to do it in a little bit of a different way in order so that it will be uh, easier to follow all the connections between Moed Katan and Chagiga. Uh, we're going to be going through a beautiful tshuva that was written by one of my Rebbeim, Rabbi Baruch Simon, who's one of the Rosh Yeshiva in Yeshiva University, who is a uh, an unbelievable posik, a halachic mind um, uh, of par excellence, where he wrote a 27-page long uh, responsa uh, outlining some of the major laws pertaining to Cholomoe that really frames the entire discussion. So we'll go through it in piecemeal, and as we go through it, we'll elaborate a little bit more. And uh, I think that we'll hopefully we'll be able to cover it over the next couple, go through the entire thing in, over the next couple of weeks. Inyane Cholomoe, the laws of Cholomoe. So these are uh, the sources for the prohibition of doing work on Cholomoed and some of the practical applications of this Iser. The Gemara Chagiga tells, him, tells us in Daf Yurches, How do we know that it's prohibited to do Malacha on Cholamoi. Ditana Rabbanon, as our rabbis taught, Eschag Hamatzos Tishmor, that the Pasuk tells us that the holiday of Pesach, Chag Hamatzos, we need to be Tishmor, we need to watch it. 
Shivas Yamim for seven days. So what do we learn from this Pasuk? Li made al cholo shel moe. This teaches us that there's an obligation to um, uh, observe the chol moe, the, uh, the mundane days, the days of chol, uh, the regular days that are within the moe, she'asar ba'asiyas malacha, that are prohibited for doing malacha. So according to the first opinion found in this b'risa, the iser of doing malacha on chol moe is learned from a pasuk in the Torah of chag hamatzos tish mor shivas yamin. That for the full seven days, we have, a, we have to have a shmira. We have to have a watching. We have to observe the Chag Hamatzos. Divri Rabbi Shai. This is the opinion of Rabbi Shai. Rabbi Yonasan, Amar, Rabbi Yonasan says, tzarech, You don't need to learn it from a Pasuk. That there's a prohibition of doing Malach on Cholomoed. Kal v'chomer, Because this is a Kal v'chomer. It's obvious. You can have an obvious discussion, that, uh, d- deduction that teaches you that there is a prohibition of doing Malach on Cholomoed. Okay. So the fact that it's Shivat Yamim, and we know that you have a, a explicit Pasuk saying you can't do work on the first day and the seventh day, we assume that we extend it to the five days in the middle? Yeah, because of the word Tishmor. Yeah. So that tells you that those intermediary days are somewhere in between. They're not completely permissible. They're not completely Chol. Yeah. But they're also not completely Yantiv because yeah. otherwise the Torah wouldn't have gone out of its way to tell you only on the first day you're not allowed to do malach, mm-hmm. okay. right? According to Rabbi Yonasan, though, you don't need that pasuk because it's a kal v'chomer. Uma Rishon v'shvi'i says Rabbi Yonasan, the first day of Yantiv of Pesach and the last day of Yantiv, they only have she'en kedusha lefnei an They're only holy on that day itself, meaning that the day after the first day of Pesach, and the day before the first day of Pesach are not Yamim Tovim. They don't have Kedusha. They don't have a Kedusha Sayom. The last day of Pesach is the same thing. There's no Kedusha Sayom before or after the last day of Pesach. And nevertheless, on days when there's no Kedusha Sayom before or after it, on that day itself, it's Asr Ba'asiyas Malacha. It's Asr Du Malacha. Cholol Shomoed. So then Chol HaMoed, which is smacked in between, Shiyesh Kedusha Lefnein V'acharein, there's Kedusha before Chol HaMoed and also after Chol HaMoed, then definitely Aser, then Eino Din Shtiye Asur Ba'asiyas Malacha, then certainly it should be Aser to do Malacha. Now, it, 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 it's right. Why, why is that a Kal V'chomer? So I, I, I believe the way that the Rishonim explained why this is a Kal V'chomer is because basically it, Alpi Svara, logically, it wouldn't make sense for us to go from, you know, driving at 60 miles an hour to slamming on the brakes and coming to a complete stop in observing a level of Kedusha. That we don't, we don't, we, we, we have a, a certain, you know, um, uh, you know, digression in the, in the Kedusha that takes place. That when you go from a yantiv that's going to lead into another yantiv, so then those in between days can't be nothing. There has to be some kedusha to them. There has to be some. So what is that? How does that you know manifest itself? So according to Rabbi Yonasan, it manifests itself in a pro in a, in a prohibition of doing work, certain type of work. Okay, you're going to see also when we get to later when we get to the. Uh, comments of the Turi Evan, the Shagas Arye. Um, uh, he has comments on a couple of Mesechas on Shas, like Mesechas uh, uh, Chagiga, Mesechas Megillah, and Tainus, I think. I think he also has on Moed Katan a few Mesechas in Shas. The Shagas Arye has a commentary. So he explains this Kalva Homer uh, further. But that's the basic idea is that he, it's. Like, like yeah. the Shabbos, you could. Like you could almost argue this is the same setup as a, as a seven day yantiv. No, except, except the first day of yantiv, of um, the first day of Pesach and the last day of Pesach are the same yantiv. They're linked. They're linked. Because that's the, the difference. Well, you're right. Between one Shabbos and the next, we don't have this. Yeah. So but that's because they're not linked. They're isolated. But this is actually linking them because they're part of one seven-day unit. Exactly. So if it's part of one day, one seven-day sequence, 
So those intermediary days can't be like Pesach flies out the window, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the opinion of Rabbi Yonasan. The Torah itself calls the entire period Mikra'e Kodesh. They are times of Kedusha, and therefore there has to be some Kedusha to them. That's exactly what the Gemara explains. Tani Yidach, we have an even a further, we have another Brisa. Kol Meleches Avoda Lo Sasu. That the Torah tells us you're not allowed to do any work on Pesach. Limed al cholo shel moe. This is to tell you that you're not allowed to do work even on cholo moe. She'asar ba'asiyas malacha divir Rabbi Yosaglili. Rabbi Yosaglili says this is the source you're not allowed to do malacha on cholo moe. Rabbi Kiva Omer Rabbi Kiva says, Ein otzarek. You don't need to learn it from a pasuk. Harehu Omer because the um, the Torah tells us Ela moade Adonai asher tikrotam moadam that these are the uh, the holidays of Hashem, the designated times of God. Uh, and therefore, if Cholomoid is included during those times, it can't be that the Pasuk is referring to the first day of Yom. Why? The Torah already refers to it as a holiday. If it's referring to the last day. What was that? So you, you're reducing the Pasuk that Ele Moade means obviously something else that's... Means Cholomoid, right? Because it's not referring to the first day, and it's not referring to the last day. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because in Bishvi, Harik Farnam or Shabbason, right? Ha'ena kasa medaber, el b'cholo shel moed. It must be, it's referring to cholo moed, l'lamadcha, she'asr basiyas malacha, that there is an iser of doing malacha. Okay, that is the fourth, the opinion, we, the fourth the opinion we've had so far. What? The fact that the Torah calls it a moed means that there's yeah. something. means that there's got to be something significant to it. Okay. Right? We'll have to figure out also exactly what is the significance of cholo moed. Right? Why is every like the Ramban explains that a Isser Malacha is, you know, the reason we don't do Malacha is because by not doing Malacha, not just Cholomoid, but in general, all Kedusha, Kedusha manifests itself when you, um, uh, um, when, when you hold back from something. Right? By, by pulling back from doing creative labor, you're, you're, you, what you're doing is you're showing that this is a unique day. So what it is that we're trying to accomplish on Chol I don't know yet. But it's clear that the Torah is making it, is telling us that, that Chol has a has unique elements to it. Tani Idach, another opinion. Sheishas Yamim Tochal Matzos, that for six days we're supposed to eat matzo. Biyom Ashvi Atzeres La Hashem. And then on the seventh day, there's another Yom Ma'ashvi atzur, just like on the seventh day, you have to stop from doing work, af sheishas yamim atzurin, being that there is a hekish between the six days of, of the intermediary days of Pesach and the seventh day, which is called atzeres, that tells you that the six days also have some sort of a limitation to them. I ma'ashvi atzur b'chol malacha, af sheishas yamim nami, atzurin b'chol malacha. So according to this opinion, the b'risa, it would seem that they have to be completely connected, meaning uh, completely um, the same. So that would mean that you're not allowed to do anything on Cholomoy. You're not allowed to get in the car. You're not allowed to go on Cholomoy trips. You have to treat it like a real yontiv. But we know the Torah doesn't tell us that. So how are you going to deal with the fact that there is a limitation in this connection? So says the Gemara, Tamalomar b'yom hashvi atzeres. No, u'b'yom hashvi. That on the seventh day, that is the day that has a complete atzeres. But the Torah still connects the sixth and the seventh, the six days in between, and the seventh day, to tell you that the sixth day shares some characteristics with the seventh day. Hashvi only on the seventh day, atzur bechol melacha ve'ein shisha yamim atzurin bechol melacha. Halo masan akasav el lechachamim. This is a this is a classic example. This is one of the famous places in the Torah that there is. A manifestation of a pasuk in this week's uh, 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 parsha that the Torah tells us uh, in Parsha Shoftim, Lo Sasuru Mashi Yigidu L'Chayim that we have to follow the ways of the rabbis. That the rabbis have a, a you know are were given a mesorah on how to understand the Torah. So the rabbis are understanding the Torah. They have a mesorah to understand the pasuk, Lo Yom Aser Ve'Eze Yom Muter, which day has a complete 
prohibition to it the seventh day, namely, and which days have permissibility to it, namely, um, the uh, the Chol Moed, the intermediary days, Ezu Malacha Asura Ve'ezu Malacha Mutaris, which Malachos you're allowed to do on Chol Moed, what Malacha you're not allowed to do on Chol Moed, that is all Masar and Akasov Le Chachamim. Right, that's, so that's all Masar. All Masar. There's no yeah. derivation from some, like for example, we, in Chol Moed, I mean, uh, Yontif is a Pasuk that allows you, I can't remember what it's called, like it's something like it tells you that you can prepare for yourself food. Yeah. And that's where they get all the... Hasher ya'achel l'chol nefesh, hulavado ya'asabahem. There's no similar pasuk that sort of derives the laws of the Correct. That's what, that's what it seems like from this Gemara. We, exactly. And we're going to get, we're going to get back to that when we see the Shuri Evan, when we see the Shagasari, which is... So now, Akam Lashona, this is the Gemara, the Gemara ends, but we're left with a lot of blinks in this Gemara. Number one is we had six opinions as to what the source is for the prohibition of doing malachan cholamoid. That's number one. Number two, we have to investigate exactly what you just brought up, Gavin, which is <clears throat> that, it, well, okay, even if you want to say that there's a prohibition of doing malacha, well, we know that you're not completely prohibited from doing the malacha. The Gemara makes that very clear. So then if that's the case, where do we come up with all of the halachos of cholamoid, what's allowed to be done, what's not allowed to be done? Like, where do the rabbis come, this, come up with this? I'm, I know it says Masra and Akasa the Chachamim, but the rabbis never created something in a vacuum. We have that in the Gemara, uh, in Mesechus Pesachim, on the Chalam Adam and Beis, that the, the, the Gemara says, Kolman the the, the Tikkun Rabbanon Ke'en Del Reis HaTikkun. Whenever the rabbis established the halacha, they established it, according to the Torah, that there is a, it was, nothing was ever created in a vacuum. It was created a thoughtfully pattern after halachos in the Torah. So the rabbis didn't just make this up. They have the right to interpret it. That's lo sasur, lo sasur, yaminu small, that we follow the way that the rabbis interpret the Torah, but they're, they're coming in with a set of rules and regulations on how to do that. They have a masora of how to set it up. But where, so what exactly are they applying to the halachas of Cholamoid that give it its limitations and its stringencies? Okay. So says Rabbi Simon, the common Nevar Shitas HaRishonim. Later, we're going to explain the opinions of the Rishonim, the Gabe HaDrashos Hanal, how to deal with all of these different opinions found in the Braisa, uh, in the Gemara, Im Heim De Araisa O Asmach De Ba'ama. Whether these, um, uh, these derivations that are found in the Gemara are uh, from the Torah, this halacha of, of the prohibition of doing malacham cholamoid, or is the entire institution of doing malacham cholamoid simply rabbinic, uh, but uh, we find hints to it in the Torah, um, a way to, uh, to justify the prohibition found in the Torah. Okay, now let's get to uh, explaining and, and uh, dealing with some of these questions we are left with. Which is all right. We got. We went through the Gemara. We understand that there is a prohibition of doing malachan cholamoid. We don't know if it's the rice the rabbanon. We don't know what to do with all these different sources. We don't know if this is a positive commandment um, uh, to observe cholamoid or this is a negative commandment to not do prohibition on on cholamoid. We don't know how the rabbis come up with the rules regarding cholamoid. There's a lot that is left in the balance over here in terms of how to deal with the halachas of cholamoid. Before we even get to some of the practical halachas of Cholamoid, so what Rabbi Simon does is that he presents an amazing uh, nafkamina, an, an, an amazing um, uh, practical application to all of those different opinions that were presented in the Gemara. Ha'im of malkus ba'osa malacha b'cholamoid. If someone does work on Cholamoid and... And, and they, they violate this, this obligation to make sure that you treat Cholamoid with a certain level of Kedusha, would they receive lashes for doing such a thing? Well, if you say, well, right off the bat, before we even get to the, the, the answer, right off the bat, if you say that, that, that Cholamoid is only a rabbinic prohibition, then certainly you know that there's no key of Malkus. So there are malk, there there are um, uh, there are rabbinic level malkus, but what we're talking about are deoraisa malkus, right? Malkus mardos, which the rabbis will will give out if you know 
under circumstances that, you know, kind of like, you know, to send a message, right? Like, like, no, that is severe. And even though you, you know, you show me the handbook and you show me I didn't do anything wrong in the handbook. No, no, no. We're going to give you Marcus anyway. What we're talking about here is because as, as, as a, an onish, as a punishment from the Torah for violating Malachi Holomoy. So right off the bat, the whole question is assuming that there's a Del Risa prohibition over here. And the fact that we've got a Shamor is not enough. That's exactly what we're going to get to. Nihine. By the way, there's a terrible background. What? There's like a lot of clicking in, on your side. What about now? Now's good. Now's good? Okay. I think I was shaking my leg and it must have been... It must have been yeah. something. Anyway, so the... So if you assume that these malachos, uh, that these drushos, that these uh, derivations found in the, in the Gemara are of a Dilraisa status, meaning that Chol HaMoed is a Torah institution. So then Danu HaAchronim, the, the Achronim deal with Im Yish Nafkemina Ladina Bnei'em. Is there an Achamina? Is there an, a practical application between all these different sources? So Kasaf Hamin Chasinach, the Min Chasinach, Rav Yosef Babad, written in, uh, who passed away in 18, uh, 1908. Uh, Rav Yosef Babad was uh, the, the Av Basin of Chernobyl, was an unbelievable Gaon. He was uh, very, very poor uh, when he wrote his Sefer Min Chasinach, which I have right over here. And the Menachas Chinuch is uh, one of the most unbelievable svarim to ever be written. Um, yeah, it's funny because I was reading the Sefer Chinuch and I didn't know, I never heard. I mean, I guess the Menachas Chinuch is referred to in the article notes. Yes, yeah, often. So, uh, Rabbi, that would, would make sense. Love it. So, right. So, what he has over here, so you see the box in the middle, that's the Sefer Chinuch. Yeah. He has a running commentary on the Sefer Chinuch. And what he does is that he, he opens up the Sefer HaChanach, where the Sefer HaChanach is, is a book compiling the 613 mitzvos, uh, giving you the uh, sum very, very, very briefly, like usually in like a paragraph, uh, the laws of the mitzvah, telling you the uh, ethical uh, teachings that are found in the mitzvah, right? The Minchas Chinach opens up the mitzvah to, to, to give you beautiful halachic insights found in the Gemara, in the Rishonim, in the Rambam, in the Shulchan Aruch, in the Shagas Ari, in Rabbi Kiva Eger. It, unbelievable, giving you these insights all connected to this mitzvah. It, it is one of the most delicious farm. Rav, Rav Shechter uh, likes, likes to say that, that uh, you could, I think he, I think he quoted this from, from Rav Soloveitchik, that if you know everything that's in the Minchas Chinach, you could pull off faking being the Gadol Hador. He's got everything in there. He's got everything in there. You could, you could be the biggest phony Gadol Hador in the entire world if you just know everything that's written in the Minchas Chinach. Uh, Rav Soloveitchik, I must be, was his favorite safer, the Minchas Chinach. Uh, he finished the entire Minchas Chinach, uh, which now is written in a three-volume set, even though Rav Baba, because he was so poor, he actually wrote it all in one volume, and the entire book was written in, um, in Roche Tevos, in acronyms, uh, because he just couldn't afford the income. Yeah. Isn't that unbelievable? And then later, after, after we realized that this is something quite valuable, so then there was money put behind to expand it, and now it's written in a full form. And the, uh, so Rav Soloveitchik finished the entire Minchas Chinuch by the time he was Bar Mitzvah. After his mother would tuck him in in bed at night, so he'd say, okay, mommy, I love you, good night. After she'd leave the room, look both ways, pull out a Minchas Chinuch from, after, from under his pillow and learn Minchas Chinuch in bed. Uh, the, the Minchas Chinuch has is, is been a cherished safer for Klai Yisrael for a long time now. It's an unbelievable work. So, cause of a Minchas Chinuch, the Minchas Chinuch writes, sheyesh nafkamina bein hadrashos legabe chi of malchus, that there is a practical application in this discussion in the Gemara between all of the uh, original sources for the prohibition of doing Malachan Cholamoid as to whether or not you're going to receive lashes for violating Cholamoid. Lamandi Yalif Iser Malacha Me Eschak Hamatos Tishmar. That according to the one who says that 
the 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 source for the prohibition of doing malach on cholamoid is learned from as chagamatzos tishmor that we have to observe the chagamatzos loken so then you get malchus why mishum dehi shamer havelav that we know that the gemara tells us um, he shamer pen uh, and uh, and lo. Uh, that if the Torah uses the language of hishamer or pen or lo, um, al, these types of language indicate that one is not allowed to do something. It's a prohibition from the Torah. So tishmor means that it's prohibition, exactly what you said, Gavin. So therefore... Okay, I, learned that, I learned that from the Sefer HaChanach, I believe. Oh, there you, yeah, exactly. It comes up often in the Sefer HaChanach. So, the, so if that's the case, so then one certainly would receive lashes for violating the Malach on Cholomoyed. Amnam, Leman the Yelef, Min Ele Moadei Adonai, that, however, if you, if you learn it out from the fact that the Torah says that it refers to them as a Yantiv, as a Moed, so then, Shu Mitzvah Esei Bola, then it's only a positive commandment. And then therefore, Ein Loken, you don't get Malchus for not fulfilling a positive commandment, you only get Malchus for violating a negative commandment. And then the same would be if someone, if you learn, if according to the opinions that learn it from a, a Kalva Chomer, so then Gamkin Ein Loken, then also you're not going to get lashes. Why? Mishum She'ein Onshin Minadin. We uh, do not give uh, um, lashes, we don't give punishment if one violates a halacha that is learned from a Kalva Chomer. That if you learn a halacha from a kalva homer, if you learn a prohibition from a kalva homer, then you're not going to receive punishment for violating such a, um, a prohibition. You would get punished from shamayim. However, in this world, we can't give you punishment. Why? The simple reason is because the Torah, if the Torah goes out of its way to explicitly tell you what's prohibited, so then that is a that's that's a, speaking also to dayanim to tell dayanim that if people violate this you have to take retribution against the fact that, you know, in, in vengeance, um, against the fact that they stood up against God. Uh, like the way that uh, Rabbi Yonason Ibshitz explains it in Simon Ayan of um, the Urim Vitumim, he explains that, you know, uh, that if you, if you smack God, then he smacks you back, right? That if you stand up and rise against God, then God will um, exact uh, punishment on you through the basin. However, if it's learnt out through a derivation that we made through a Kalva Homer, there, that's not explicit that the Torah punishes you, and therefore we can't deliver any sort of punishment. Okay, so then it's, it's, so the, any, it's any derivation. Any, yeah. So, so this, is, this is what the, um, so this is what the Menchaz Chenach says. According to the Menchaz Chenach, if you learn the prohibition of doing malachan cholamoid from eschaga matzos tishmor, then you get malchus. However, if you learned it from one of the other opinions, you would not get malchus either because it's simply only a positive commandment or it's because uh, it's uh, learned from a kalva homer. So now the Ture Evan, the Ture Evan um, uh, goes on to explain something, uh, something further. Take a look at this. Amnam. However, you and Baturi Evan, take a look at the Turi Evan, says Rav Simon. Who also says um, that if you learn uh, that the source of the prohibition of doing Malachan Cholomoid is learned from is Chagamatzos Tishmor, so then of course, Loken al Maleches Cholomoid. So then of course, you're going to get Malchus for violating Cholomoid. Ulam, however, look at what he says over here. This is unbelievable. Hosef Levar Shegam Leman De Yalif Mekav Homer. That if if you even if you assume that the that the source of the prohibition of doing Malachan Cholamoid is learned from a Kav Homer, then Gam Kain Lokin, you're also going to get Malchus Al Malachas Cholamoid. Hold on one sec. I thought we just said Ein Onchin Minadin. We don't exact um, punishment on a person if the prohibition was learned from a Kava Homer. Shahare Afal Pi Shekaimalon Dein Onchin Minadin. I thought we say Ein Onchin Minadin. Says the Turi Evan Kvar Kava Hamagid Mishnah. There's a famous Magid Mishnah in Hilkos Maacholios Hasuras in Parag Beis Halacha Al that the Magid Mishnah. Um, who was one of the early defenders of the Rambam. I think the Magad Mishnah lived in the, in, in the 15th century. Early defender of, of, of the Rambam, where the Magad Mishnah has a rule in this halacha, in this principle of 
in Onshin Minadin that while yes, it's true, we don't give punishment if you learn out the prohibition from a Kava Homer, but that's only if you're learning the entire halacha from a Kava Homer. Meaning, if there was already a positive commandment associated with it, but now you're just tacking on, in addition to the positive commandment, you're tacking on a negative component to the commandment as well. So then we say, yeah, onchin minadin. You do get punished for violating such a thing. This is what the Magen Mishnah says. Shabbat and shulula kava chomer, that even without the kava chomer, ha hadaver mutter legamre, that it would have been completely mutter. So then, varaka yadea kava chomer yafin and le'eser, and only due to the kava chomer, you know that it's prohibited. Then, az amrin and enon shimenadin. Then you say that we don't exact any sort of punishment. Amnam, however, in Lula Kava Homer, that even without the Kava Homer, Akati Haya Asr it still would have been prohibited to do due to the positive commandment. So then Hakava Homer, Bal Lomer Shiyeshkan Gamla, but the Kava Homer is coming to teach that in addition to the positive commandment, there's a negative commandment, as Lokan Afilum Kava Homer, then you even get Malchus from the Kava Homer. So then if that's the case, then Hola Moed, even if you assume that the that the source of the prohibition of doing malachan chol amoid is learned from a kalvachomer, still you're going to get malchus for violating chol amoid. Why? Because he ha Because the basic reading of the Gemara hanal that we that we said earlier, who shaman the yelaf homer That according to the one who says you learn from a kalvachomer, smacha essay de mikray kodesh. Remember what the Gemara said before from Rabbi Yonasan. Rabbi Yonasan said that we learn from a kalvachomer you're not allowed to do malachan because we know that there's a concept of, kol, of Cholomoid. How do we even know there's a concept of, of Cholomoid? From the fact that the Torah re- refers to it as Mikrai Kodesh, that these are the times that are holy. We still would have had to observe Cholomoid on some level because of the positive commandment associated with it. And that's why we're going to uh, dish out punishment for violating Cholomoid, because that's exactly what we're deriving from the Kalva Homer. We're deriving that not only is it um, a, a positive commandment, that there's even a negative commandment associated with it. Unbelievable analysis from the Turi Evan. So now continues the Turi Evan and he writes the following. Haturi Evan. Hechriach psha zu besugyan, shahari betchilas asugya mavur, shi rabbi yeshaya yalef iser malacha me chag hamatsos tishmor. So says the Turi Evan, he said that when you look at the sugya, you see that rabbi yeshaya learns that the prohibition of doing malacha cholamoid is from chag hamatsos tishmor. Ulishitasha, ulishitaso, yes, yes, malchus, but malachas cholamoid. According to him, you receive malchus for violating. Malachan Cholamoid, the Imkain, Kishabara Bionasan, the Amar Enot Sara. Says the Tori Evan, this is unbelievable. Just from the simple reading of the Gemara, you know that even according to Bionasan, you get Malchus. Because what were the words of Bionasan? Take a look back at the Gemara. The Gemara said that Rabbi Shai says we learn it from Eschaga Matsos Tishma. Fine. Rabbionasan, Omar Bionasan says Enot Sara. You don't need to learn it from that puzzle. I'll tell you why doing pro- that there's a prohibition of doing malachan cholamoid. How do I know? Oh, because there's a kalva chomer, and also because the Torah refers to it as mikrei kodesh. Hold on one second. Don't I still need the pasuk of Rabbi Shai to teach me that you would get punished for doing malachan cholamoid? The fact that Rabbi Yonasan says eno tzarech means to tell me that all of the halachos that Rabbi Shai wanted to teach me about cholamoid, I can learn without coming on to that Pasuk of es- Eschaga Matzos Tishmar, including giving out punishment. This Gemara, by the way, is a tremendous source for the Magad Mishnah's principle of how to understand Einon Shemin Adin. The Einon Shemin Adin only applies if you're learning the entire Halacha from a Kava Homer. But if, you're, if you already know the Halacha, but now you're just adding on the level of prohibition to it, so then we would give out punishment for violating uh, that halacha, namely in this context, chol ha-moed. Okay. Then he quotes Ramban that pretty much says the same thing as the Turi Evan. Then he quotes a note of Behuda that says that, no, 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 
The note view that thinks that this whole discussion is ridiculous. There's no chance that there would be a uh, punishment for violating Chol Hamoid. This is the first, the end of the end of the first part of this discussion. That, why, did he, why did he say that? Based on what? Why it, it, he thinks? Well, it's it's. I'm not sure why he quotes this note of Yehuda here. I mean. The Pashat reason why is because each of the sources that the Gemara brings down are, sh are, are shaky in and of themselves. Next time, we'll see a Tosfos right on that Gemara, uh, on Daf Yud Ches, that shows that the, the fact that you can, that one would suggest that doing Malach is such a, a severe, uh, uh, such a, such a severe uh, um, uh, prohibition, is a very, very weak uh, analysis, Tosfos argues. And many Rishonim argue. Um, the Rush argue, many Rishonim say that it's, it can't be that it's the Oraisa. So Nabi Yehuda thinks that it, it's, it, would be too, it would be too wide of a pendulum swing, which sometimes is an argument that we find in Postkim, where it, you can't have one opinion say that there's an Isser del Oraisa that you'd get Malkus for, and then another opinion say that on a level del Oraisa it would be completely mutter and it's only a rabbinic prohibition. Like, it's too, it's too, you know, large of a swing. Very often we find that in Hilcho Shabbos. Uh, the Rishonim will bring up arguments like that in Hilcho Shabbos. So I think that we know the view is saying that you can't even be, you can't entertain the discussion of there being a, 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 a punishment associated with Cholomoed if there's opinions that say that, that, that it's uh, us or uh, that there's only an Isra of doing Malachan Cholomoed. Did we learn that? I thought we just learned that there, there was... Uh, the, the, the derivation was a Chol Vachomer, not a, not a, that's not a, that's not a Issa Derabanan, that's just a. No, I know, but there are some, I'm saying, we're going to see Rishonim that interpret that whole discussion in the Gemara only being on a rabbinic level. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll stop here for now. Cool. We'll pick up from here next time. Shkoyach.